March 24, 2023. This is the S&P 500 eFutures Mini on the Thinkorswim platform, the 2000 tick chart. Go down to the descriptions below. You can see where I looked, where I kind of thought where there were setups as well as where I took my trades. This is how the chart looked like today. This yellow line is just the 200 day simple moving average on the daily. And this orange line is the 100 day simple moving average on the daily. So the prices today, it's kind of how I drew up my chart as, where, as well as where I took my trades. So let's just clean this up a little bit. Uh, in the, in the pre-market, prices sold off and they kind of consolidated for a bit. And then for a good part of half the day, it looked like it was just kind of in a gigantic trading range. It was a little challenging for me to kind of nail down where the trading range was because at one time I had it down here. Well, I kind of had it down here based off of the low of the day in the pre-market and the high of the day in the pre-market. But then as soon as prices opened, I kept it here and I drew a secondary top of the trading range. I kind of kept adjusting it because I had it here at one time and it kept violating. And then I kind of drew it up to here and then it kind of kept violating. So it was a little bit hard to pinpoint exactly where the top of the range was. So it was easier to go long as opposed to look for a short off or shorting off the top to fade the top of the trading range. Then toward the uh, nine o'clock Pacific Standard Time, I was able to kind of, I did, well, that's where this channel started, this trend channel started. And then after, you know, this one closed here, I kind of drew this channel here and it looked like it fit pretty well. And most of the trades I found kind of in the beginning and then a little bit toward the afternoon. There weren't too, too many trades, but I feel like in this section, I did trade a little bit, probably a little too much, but I thought I saw some good setups. So I kind of took advantage of them. I took a total of eight trades, five winners and three losers. I'm going to go into the trades now. This is a pre-market. I don't trade the pre-market. It's too early for me in the Pacific Standard Time. So here it is. Prices kind of look like they're in this trading channel, which I kind of drew when I saw these three touches. And I just kind of, when it touched up here, I kind of put it right here. At one time, I thought maybe it was actually a little bit higher up to here, but it looked like it was better here when this one confirmed here. So prices continue moving. I have these smaller trend channels and they kind of consolidated, went down, uh, disregards the 100 day simple moving average, which I didn't really worry about. Kind of goes into this own little small little channel breaks out so all through here it was pretty choppy so you could you could find a bunch of second entries but not necessarily second entries that are high probability because you could have said this is a new high first entry long second entry long suddenly call this a failure but you're running right into the ema and at the time this was kind of going bullish and the same thing here you could have said okay well there's like a new short heat new low here first entry short second entry short but this candle is decent but it's also right against the flattening of this ema so there are a bunch of those all throughout the day, but very few that I thought were kind of high probability. So prices kind of move down and they, they start moving upwards. And I was looking, okay, here's a new low, first entry short. And then I saw a second entry short, but this is a bad signal bar to take second entry short. Second entry short failure kind of occurs here, but it's too far from the EMA. I just kind of didn't like it. And I did see a potential fail breakout here. Now, the original trend line, the original trading range was kind of like something right here. I'll just kind of arbitrarily put it right here for now. This is where I had my trading range originally drawn, this red line, and down here where this blue line was. So I thought there was a potential fail breakout, but it only had it really confirmed once, once to one time here and then the second time here. However, I did see a lower high setup. Because you could have said it, saw it also as a new low here, first entry short, and a potential second entry short setting up right there. And so this fail breakout, I couldn't really trust yet to break out of this red line, which was originally where I had my trading range. And so I took a trade here. It moves down. You know, I actually got uh, the two points out of it, but I actually I screwed up a little bit by hitting the mouse incorrectly. So when I shorted, I thought I was going to get out by going long, and then I shorted a second time. So then since I shorted twice, and the second time is a lower entry, which I didn't like, I just cleared out the whole trade. Ended up being kind of a little green on the trade, but it was just kind of a 
brain fart mistake that I should know better. Prices are chopping. They kind of look like they formed this trading range. And then I do see a new high here, first entry long, second entry long. And so this second entry long, this is an okay signal bar, but it's pretty neutral. It's at the bottom of this trading range. But then I also see a potential uh, new low, first entry short, a potential second entry short. But considering what this price action was doing, they both closed below the EMA. And so then I thought, okay, I think this is actually going to move up higher because I thought it was going to be a bounce off of this and continue up higher. So I put my entry one tick above this original. Actually, I think I put it a little bit lower. I got filled and then it flashes down. I think it took me out on this candle. So actually, let's just pull this up just so I get a little bit of clarification. Okay, so actually it went down. I wasn't sure if it was going to go long or short, and I decided I was going to go short because I thought I thought it was going to be a second entry short, and this guy confirms it, and then I actually enter on this candle, and what happens is when it goes down, it stops me out because my stop's up here. So I entered at 39.57, which is about right here. Kind of wanted a little bit more room, and then it stopped me out on this candle as it moved up. So at the time, I didn't think in real time and consider that this is – in the presence of this trading range. So I would have, you know, been had I been wiser, I would have realized I'm shorting into the lows of this trading range. So that was definitely a kind of a foolish trade to have taken. So now currently I'm in the red because I kind of got a small win here and a, a red there. Prices continue moving up, chops around. I could draw these smaller trend channels. I see this bigger one, it breaks out. Prices continue moving up. I do see a new new low here, first entry short. It goes all the way up. I thought this is potentially a second entry short. I mean, technically it is a second entry short, but then it fails moving up right away. Now this happened pretty quickly, so I wasn't ready for it. And I wasn't paying as close attention because if it was close to the EMA, I think I would have been more dialed in. But since it was pretty far from the EMA, the second entry short, I thought there's a potential it keep going down when this failure occurred. Because I also thought, well, it's probably gonna break out of the top of this trading range formed by this red line and this blue one down here. And it might have a fail breakout. So I didn't want to uh, take a risk on either direction. And then this flashed up. So ended up uh, kind of worked out as a pretty decent trade if you had taken it. Then I see a new high here, first entry long, second entry long. I do like the second entry long because this is a pretty decent signal bar, as you're going to see. And it's going into the EMA, though. You know, it's kind of going into the EMA here. I admit that it's a little risky because it is at the top of the larger trading range, which is this guy. So going long here, I mean, if it really truly is a fail breakout and it comes back down, I could get stopped out. So, you know, I thought perhaps it was getting ready to uh, just kind of move a second move up. It made two clean legs down and I thought, okay, maybe there's enough room. I did have this trend channel drawn down and I thought this bounce might be enough to get up to the to the EMA and maybe break through a little bit. So I'll admit it isn't the best trade, but it was certainly risky. And I was able to get a scalp out of it. Prices continue moving down, but I will say that this isn't the best setup and this wasn't in hindsight, the best idea to have taken. More, more often, I think I should have just more, ac uh, more accurately, I think I should have just left it alone. Prices continue moving down. It goes into this trading range. I do see a new low here for such a short. This is the second entry short. I marked it just because it looked like it's a pretty, pretty good, um, excuse me, it's a pretty good signal bar. And I actually tried to enter this trade. I put it one tick below here because I thought there's enough room to get back down to here because I had this trading range drawn and I actually had a little bit higher. I didn't like it all the way up here because I didn't like this uh, multiple spike throughs. So I actually had it a little bit higher about cutting through right through here. So I thought there's enough room to make it back down. Next candle formed, but it doesn't pick me up. So it's a missed trade because if you look here, even though I had one tick below, when this one formed, that's when I felt confident taking the trade. So then as soon as this one closes, this one's already in motion. So I hit my entry right here and it never comes back for me. So it's a little unfortunate. It's a missed trade. I thought it was a pretty decent setup. And I thought it might be a new low because it broke out of this trend channel, breaks out and might make a new low to test the extreme. So up here, I thought, okay, there's enough room to get back down. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get in. Prices continue moving. It's in this trading range now. 
So I'm just sitting on hands, just kind of watching price action unfold. It moves up and out. I do see like these measure moves. I also saw this big one, thinking there might be a second one, at least come down and touch down here. Prices do move down. It's almost making the measure move. Gets pretty close and then it reverses up a little bit. So I'm gonna get into this area where I took a bunch of trades in a span of about, I don't know, 10, 12 minutes. So I see a new high, first entry long, second entry long, but this second entry long hasn't actually triggered yet. So what I did was I actually jumped the gun, which is a bad idea, and it's below the EMA. So I didn't really wait for confirmation to, to form. I jumped on on this candle. It flashes, picks me up, and then immediately takes me out because my entry was up one tick above on this red candle, and then my stop was one tick below on this green candle. So I certainly should have waited for confirmation, should have waited for this candle to actually trigger this setup. But I jumped in too quickly, and I got a second loss for the day. And then immediately, I see another. I see the true second entry long. I see this first entry long. Then technically, this red candle made the second entry long, but it also engulfed this entire green candle. Then when this guy formed, it kind of flashed back up, and it closed below. But I believe that it was still a second entry. It was kind of coming back up. So it was a little aggressive, for sure. And it was riskier because the EMA is going flat, but I took a risk on that trade. I was able to get a scalp. The runner got stopped out. And then here, I said, okay, there's a new low here. First entry short, second entry short. Actually, second entry short is made right here when it flashes through. And then there's a double bottom here. But I also saw this as first entry long, second entry long. And I saw this as a potential higher low because when this candle closed above, I said, I think, I, I think this bullish move is continuing because these are making higher lows and higher highs. So again, this risk is a little bit higher, but I thought this, you know, higher low is confirming the second entry long and it did close above the EMA. And the trigger candle right here and the next one over, it confirms it moved up. So I didn't enter yet. I just watched what happened here. So I did see, okay, the second entry short is failing or is on its way to failing. And this one, even though it's a bearish candle, is failing here. So it's getting really complicated here. But I went ahead and took the entry anyways. I was able to get a scalp. And then I tried to manage my runner, but then uh, it got stopped up, up here. So then prices continued moving. And this is all happening within 10 minutes. So this is definitely, I feel like, uh, probably got a little bit too trigger happy. And there's a new high, first entry long. And I see this double top. So this one could potentially make a second entry long. And it doesn't. It comes right up to the top. But not only is this candle the same height as this candle, it is getting squeezed even more. So it opened and closed right at the same price. On top of that, I have this trend trend line drawn now. And I thought, okay, this is a pretty strong signal. It has, it's at least going to flash up for a quick scalp. So I entered one tick above on the next candle. Or I just had my order and I placed it. It fills me, chops around for a bit. So I'm a little concerned if it's going to come back down. And then it goes up, it makes my scalp, and this is the one that I managed the runner even better. So I kept uh, my patience, kept my runner right down here at break even, waiting for this to see if it's going to swing higher. I was willing to get a break even trade on the runner. So then it keeps moving up. Then I move my runner to here. As soon as this flashes up, I move my runner to the low of this candle. The prices keep moving up. And then I finally take off my runner up here when it was consolidating, and I was able to get a 15-point runner off of this, which is uh, pretty pretty amazing. And the prices continue. And so it comes back down, and at this point, I realized, look, this is from 819 to about 832. In a span of about 10 minutes, 10 to 13 minutes, I took four trades. Like, these three won, and this one lost. But I did realize, okay, you know, are there truly that many high probability setups in here? Maybe so, maybe not. Maybe I'm just seeing things more because I wanted to see them. So I knew I had to calm down, especially after this big runner, you know, cleaned out all the uh, red that I had, as well as made me a pretty tidy profit. I decided I need to just sit and calm down, kind of maybe even stop for the day and just watch the charts, mark trades, but don't take them because it's just too risky. Well, too risky in my current mindset. And the prices just kind of did this really crazy shoot up. 
all within one minute because this is at 845, 844, and this is about 846. So it spiked up, which I couldn't really find in news, except that there were some Fed presidents speaking, and they just kind of gave some color. So I don't know if the market liked what they said or they didn't. But as you can see, this tra trading range, which I drew here, is no longer valid. So I did drag this up to here at one time and then further up to here. But I'm just going to delete it now just to get it a little cleaner on the charts. Prices continue chopping. As I said, you do see some second entries, but I wouldn't really consider them high probability, or at least I didn't recognize them as high probability, probably due to inexperience, and I haven't seen enough, uh, enough of these setups. But I was also okay because it looked pretty consolidated, these candles. Prices continue moving up. I don't really take any further trades or any see any really good setups until about right here. I see a new low, first entry short, second entry short. Now, if I decided to keep trading, I thought this was a pretty good signal bar. I didn't want to take it though, but the move was very strong. You got these two very big green candles already. So it is, I wasn't confirmed and sure about the top of this trend channel yet. I saw something happening, but I didn't confirm this yet. But as soon as this next candle after the signal bar came down, and form that I said, okay, I'm going to draw a line here. And then I just put it down here. So I thought, okay, this might be a developing trend channel to trade off of, but I didn't, wasn't in time to recognize this. And I'm not sure I would have taken this trade anyways, after seeing this big, big push up. But I do see a failed second entry long, excuse me, a failed second entry short. So it's a new low first entry short, second entry short comes all the way down here. It's coming up and this one causes the second entry short to fail. But I also saw a potential hidden second entry long from here. You know, it opens down here, goes up and pulls back down. So this is your first entry long. It's hidden. They come back down and then there's a second entry long. So I saw two potential keys, uh, key entry points. But uh, again, I'm not ready to take that trade because I'm just kind of deciding, you know, I count my blessings and just be happy that I am ending up green for the day. But I did see that it's a little, you know, right against the EMA. So the second entry long seems like it might be Second entry long hidden and this failed second entry short might actually develop. But again, it's kind of also in the middle of this trade trend channel. It's kind of right at the midline. So bounce off, maybe, maybe not, but I just didn't take that trade. And I'm if I was still trading, I don't think I would have taken it anyways. Prices continue moving. It's respecting this trend channel, which gives me more confidence because there's more confirmation up here. It's coming back down. And so I'm thinking, okay, maybe it's going to confirm the bottom as well. And lo and behold, it confirms the bottom. So now I'm pretty confident this is a bullish trading trend channel to work off of. So I do see a new low here. I counted this as one big. I counted this as one big new low. I said first entry short, second entry short, and it fails. So potentially there's a trade here. It is right against the midline though, and it's far from the EMA. So I don't really like that one. But then also a visual, I see a first entry short all the way up second entry short so you kind of discount some of these small little you know pullbacks that technically would make the second entry short but i saw it first entry short second entry short and a big visual this one setting up i don't really like the signal bar though ends up working because now it fails on this second entry and then after thinking i wasn't going to take a trade i saw this as a new high first entry long second entry long so this is where i took my last and final trade even after i kind of walked had a pretty banked a pretty good profit i should have just stayed away because i took a long here because i said oh this is a first entry long second entry long this is a pretty strong signal bar i'm going to put it one tick above and it bounced off the ema ema looks like it's in the bullish trend and i'm expecting it to move to the top of this channel even though I failed up here. And so it fills me and on this candle, it happened so quick, it takes me out. Cause I actually had my stop down here and I didn't really have my stop moved in time because I would have put it down here. But if I put it down here, this would have stopped me out on this candle anyways. So it didn't really matter. So being slow in this case of moving my stop actually benefited cause I lost less than I would have. And then prices just continue moving. And I said, you know what? I had uh, five, winning trades and three losing ones. And this one could have been avoided had I just stayed away and I gave back some of my profits. So I decided I'm just not gonna trade at all for the rest of the day. Also been kind of slow. So I just kind of continued watching, look, finding, looking for entries. Certainly there's like a new high here, first entry long, second entry long, but this is a bad signal bar. Continues moving around. It kind of comes back down. It doesn't touch the bottom of this trading range, trading channel now, trend channel, excuse me. 
price will continue moving up. It has a small little overshoot, and I do see this second entry long here because it's a new high. First entry long, second entry long comes up. I consider this. Let me zoom in. Actually, this isn't a new high. This is actually a failed second entry short. Let me just correct that. Mislabeled. Reason being is this is the new low, first entry short, and this ticks one tick below, second entry short, engulfs and makes an outside candle bigger than this guy and causes it to fail. However, I don't think this is a good trade because this is a kind of a where it's at is very risky. It's already coming up close to the top of the trading range. So you have to try to scalp out in this amount of time in concern that it might bounce back down. I mean, it turns out it would have worked, but you don't know in real time. I did identify it, but I don't think it's a good trade to have taken. When prices were consolidating, breaks out, touches this bottom of this trading trend channel again, which is, you know, reassuring. Then it kind of goes up. I saw this big move, but this is already like at 1250. And this is like last right here is 1255 is last five minutes of the day. Certainly, you don't want to take any trades here, especially going into the weekend, because even if you had to hold overnight, you're technically holding over the weekend where all kinds of news items could come out. So definitely don't. Well, it's up to you, but I wouldn't. And I know I have a rule not to trade back here unless I'm already in a trade. I'm managing like a runner or something. So this is just kind of some rest of the chop. So that's how I saw the chart today. <clears throat> I saw most of the trades kind of um, morning, mid-morning, early time of the day, and then just a couple back here. So it was a little challenging for me to find the correct trend trading range here because the bottom is kind of confirmed, but even then it only touched twice. And then I did drag it up and thinking maybe there's a sub or a overlapping trading range, maybe from where this cursor is cutting across here and maybe up at the top, but then the top kept being violated or came back down. It didn't quite confirm. So I kept adjusting it until I just decided ah, I'm just going to work with these small trend channels and also these smaller trading ranges. So that's kind of how I saw today. I was lucky to walk away with some of those trades that I took. There are definitely some over trading down here, unless uh, I'll watch other YouTubers, but maybe I don't think there is that many good setups in here, but I could be wrong. So hopefully that was helpful.